Hey everyone, Warwick's here. Welcome back to Mistweaver 203. So this is the third video of the Mistweaver series here as part of the Greater Monk Academy. Um, if you are not sure what the hell is the Monk Academy, well I've been doing a series of videos, uh, three on each spec, Brewmaster, Mistweaver, and up next will be Windwalker, uh, where we break down these specs on a much more like granular type detail. And so as a result, they're broken down into three videos that cover a specific subject. Video one was talents, video two, or excuse me, video one was spells and abilities. Video two is talents. And in this video, and as I've done for Brewmaster already, we're gonna talk about your general healing priority, general approach to stats, and then uh, what we wanna do when it comes to uh, just general tips and tricks that I've learned uh, from playing Mist Beaver Monk over time and some things that are just really good, valuable things to know. So that's what these videos do. This is all aimed at beginners, people that have never played the spec before and are just trying to get a good foundation built for themselves so that they can start experimenting and exploring the spec on their own. I'm not here to give you all the answers. I just want to help you figure out, like, on a baseline level, what should you do? So that way you're not sitting there asking yourself, what do I do in this situation? What do I do in this situation? What's the next button to hit? My goal is to help make all those connections for you and then for you to take the time to explore and learn how you're going to go about becoming a better monk player because uh, i feel like in a lot of ways exploring and self-exploration is generally a good way to improve rather than hammering your way at a guide all the time even for a game that's as mathed out as wow is at this point so in today's video we're going to talk about your general healing priority now for the healing priority for mystery for monk um it depends a little bit on the build that you're playing because obviously we have like a build like this that i that i put together for it's generally accepted. There's some flex points you can do. For example, you can take Flow of Chi away and, and go with like Soothing Mist if you want to have that extra healing spell. Uh, but for a, a build like this that focuses on Jade Fired Stomp and Ancient Teachings, that uh, fist weaving dichotomy, there is uh, a build here that focuses a lot and heavily on uh, some general Soothing Mist gameplay or even heavy Soothing Mist gameplay if you want to drop like Flow of Chi to grab like Elusive Mists. Um, and over here, you're focused a lot on casting spells, but there's even like a kick weaving style spell uh, style setup as well that may not be the most effective, but to me, it's more fun. So we're going to generally talk about both of these here, uh, or general approaches to all of them. Now, the the healing priority that we're going to discuss is going to be a combination of just what I've learned and what I've played, plus things that I've worked with and learned from more experienced mist weavers. Uh, folks that have been playing the spec a long time really dive into the theory crafting of it all uh, We're not going to get into that deep on them on the math side But just generally again want to help you as a beginner mist reaper Figure out okay feel confident and like okay whatever situation that comes up. This is what I know I need to do All right, so on a very core level what I want you to always remember as a mist reaper is that if you if you never know exactly what you should be doing there's always like a very core principle that you should always fall back on. And I think this is true of every healer, uh, though I don't know all the other ones as well as I know Mist Reaver. Uh, Evoker is probably like the second closest one, and I would argue I'm still very much learning about that spec. But for Mist Reaver, the very core of Mist Reaver, and the thing that you should always fall back on if you don't know what to do, is Spread Renewing Mist and Vivify Cleave. All right. Because if nothing else, Renewing Mist, Vivify Cleave is a very core aspect of your healing. If you want to add a third to it, it's use Rising Sun Kick on cooldown. Because with the talent builds that you generally play, you're using a talent called Rising Mist. There's also uh, Crane Style that's used if you grab that, which is up here, uh, where Rising Sun Kick kicks up a gust of mist. Uh, so there's just a lot of things that Rising Sun Kick, Renewing Mist, and things like that all kind of like really loop in and core together. So if you're in a situation where you're like, I don't know what to do, it is not necessarily never, it's never, not always going to be the ideal answer, but it is always a decent answer. And that is just get Renewing Mists out and start Vivify Spam. Because if nothing else, that will always be efficient, effective healing. It's not always efficient, but it is effective healing. Now, as you start to interloop your other spells, Enveloping Mist, which is really good for like focusing a single target on their healing, uh, you incorporate things like Shilun's Gift and Thunder Focus T, which has its own 
uh, intricacies and manatee which has its own intricacies there are definitely things that are going to become like really important but on a very core level spread renewing mist vivify cleave rising sun kick on cooldown if you do that then you're always going to find yourself in a position where at the very least you have you give yourself an out in any situation that you come across in especially in mythic plus but if you're playing like the kick weaving raid build that's going to be your answer so if you haven't figured out then then your number one priority is going to be keep renewing mist on cooldown keep rising sun kick on cooldown and if you're playing the mythic plus build jade fire stomp you're going to want to keep on cooldown as well because it activates a lot of your mythic plus like healing output the other thing that you i would say is you want to always kind of keep forward in your mind is manatee managing your mana because it can restore quite a bit you want to make sure that you have a way to track your mana whether that's being done through the blizzard default frames or you have a weak aura or you use a unit frame add-on know and put your mana in a place where you're always going to be able to easily see it without it being a major distraction all right so those are kind of like your two core principles now in a situation obviously i'm not in a group so it's going to be a little tough and i was not smart and did not get dungeon footage to allow for this so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're spreading out renewing mist if you have a target that's taking like a single target damage like for example, in the one boss in halls that does the sh earthen shards debuff, you can drop an enveloping mist on them. And that's going to give you uh, the heal over time and the increased healing received from the monk is increased significantly. So it, it'll impact your renewing mist. It'll impact your vivify spam into them. Um, if you run the soothing mist uh, ability, you know, you can channel into them like this and you're going to get that healing. So it'll just, it just kind of allows you to do that. So renewing mist, Vivify spam, rising sun kick on cooldown. Enveloping mist for when a target is going to be taking big single target damage and you have the ability to spend the global to cast it and then go from there. Now, how to use abilities like Shilin's Gift? Shilin's Gift, it depends on the scenario that you're in because how you go about using it is going to vary depending on the talent build that you play. Now, in raid-based scenarios, you have a talent called Shout House Lesson that's taken, where each time you cast Shilin's Gift, you're basically getting a buff. And you can see the buffs here, they each do something individually. And so, excuse me, I had to burp there. Um, so each one does something a little bit different, and so it allows you to, you know, shout uh, in raid scenarios you don't use shaylin's gift so much for the healing i've talked in the past about how shaylin's gift in a mythic plus scenario can basically be a group lay on hands in a raid scenario you don't really actually use it for the the healing that it does you use it for the lesson that you gain off of shao house that allows you to go you know allows you to do that now i've said in the past unless you are very particular about or very experienced you don't necessarily need to track which lesson you're getting, but it's good to kind of always, once you have a lesson that's down, if Sheelan's Gift is up, go ahead and cast the Sheelan's Gift again so that you can keep the lessons rolling in a raid scenario because then you're just buffing yourself through one of these lessons. In Mythic Plus scenarios, you generally want to cast it when there's big group damage that's going out or everyone's taking some hits and you have 10 stacks of your Gust of Mist because you're running a Legacy of Wisdom which means it can hit everyone in your party and you use something like veil of pride which means that your mist generation is down to every four seconds versus every eight seconds which is the baseline so you gain the ability to get the 10 stacks roughly every 40 seconds every 40 to 45 seconds so you want to make sure that you're using it as close to that time but you don't want to just waste the 10 stacks when there's nothing nothing to heal so it's very good group healing content almost a pseudo on-demand burst and because in the build that I have right now, it's 1.6 seconds and that's without reducing this. So it's like a one second cast in my Mythic Plus build. Like it's just really valuable healing for a group scenario. Whereas in uh, raid scenarios, it's really good to use as a way to buff your, uh, a way to buff your, your kit in general. 
All right, let's talk about Thunder Focus T. So Thunder Focus T is a very interesting ability that does a lot. So it has interactions with your kit. It has interactions, you know, with, to make your Zen Pulse trigger, you know, through deep clarity. It, uh, it enhances another ability, which, you know, and then if you're running Secret Infusion, which you do down here, like, what do you generally use it on? The safest bet is when you use a Thunder Focus T in a build like this where you're using Rising Sun Kick often or in the Mythic Plus mode as well, it is generally the safest bet to use it on Rising Sun Kick because you're going to get your hot extensions through Rising Mist. You're going to get your versatility buff from Secret Infusion so you gain a damage, healing, and defensive capability. If you run Crane Style, you're going to get extra healing through the Gust of Mist casts and through Deep Clarity, it triggers that uh, Zen Pulse, which will then allow you, if you're properly spreading your Renewing Mists, to heal everyone within, uh, to heal them for a little bit, that little bit of extra damage on top of the Vivid Light Cleave. So you can see where there's this, this powerful cycle of loop through T Thunder Focus T. It is one of the strongest abilities in your kit now, and it does zero healing, at least when you push the button. It's very bizarre. But safest bet is to use it on Rising Sun Kick. There are times where using it on Enveloping Mist, which will give you the instant cast and instant heal, can sometimes be the difference between your tank dying and your tank living, um, or a DPS dying and living. And then, of course, using it on Renew and Mist to get the extra duration and give you the haste bonus from Secret Infusion if you're running that. Never a bad idea there as well. So, when in doubt, do you have a renewing mischarge? Do you have more than one of them? Use them. It's a single target taking heavy damage, enveloping miss them. Have you used Thunder Focus T recently? No? Use it. Is Rising Sun kick off of cooldown? Yes? Use it. Particularly after you Thunder Focus T. You can see like there's this there's this kind of main core priority that's going to give you like the maximum output benefit. But that's not necessarily means that it's going to be the thing you want to do every single time. You may find that using your Thunder Focus T on a Vivify when you're low mana in order to get the free Vivify cast off is not a bad idea. You may find that uh, using that, like I said, on Enveloping Mist may not be a bad idea. So there are definitely things that you can do with Thunder Focus T that allow you some creative flexibility and some creative freedom depending on the situation. But again, if you're not sure what to do with Thunder Focus T, drink it and Rising Sun Kick. That is the safest bet that is never going to be a bad thing because of how much it enables in your kit. So, I know I've repeated that a couple of times, but I want to make sure that it's impressed. If you don't know what to do with it, RSK. Manatee. I kind of talked a little bit about Manatee in prior videos, but the general good uses that you want to do for Manatee... Apologies, I made some notes on a lot of this stuff. All right, so you can spend your mana very aggressively when you know you have Manatee up because you can just sit there and chug and go from there. The big thing about Manatee is that you have to know your timings. If you know you can get a full 20 second chug off, chug it, you know, be aggressive with your mana and then chug it for the full 20 seconds so that you maximize the mana return and you maximize the mana reduction. Now, sometimes it may be a situation where you only want to chug it for a couple of seconds because you want to use it before you like revival or you use your celestial or something along those lines where you want to reduce that mana cost. So you get some creative freedom again with manatee and how you want to use it. You can use it to enable some mana cost reduction. You can use it to do a full mana chug. You can use it to try and get what little bit of mana you can in between damage events. And then you go right back into healing and you cut it off and you do the bunch of like small sips to kind of keep your mana going. Generally speaking, if you have the freedom to full chug, full chug. If you know that you're not going to have, but don't be afraid that if you see someone take a big hit or something like that, don't just sit there and keep sipping your tea. Go ahead and heal them because it spends the charges, but it doesn't spend like if you get a 20 stack and you spend 10 of them and someone takes a big chunk and you have to stop and heal them. You still have 10 stacks to go. You don't lose them. You just didn't use them. So 
you get a lot of freedom with Vanity to use it as you as you see fit and what you feel is the best solution. Don't just sit on 20 stacks for forever though, unless you're just legitimately not really using any mana, in which case you're not really doing content that is challenging to you. So that's the kind of the tips of like you know, it's a bit of a tip and trick, also it's kind of like a healing priority for manatee. Alright. So the healing priority is really actually quite basic. You want a rising sun kick, enveloping mist when you have a target that's on low cooldown. You can use chi burst when you have to do small bits of movement, and then you just want a rising sun kick on cooldown. Now you can do things like uh, with ancient teachings. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But with things like ancient teachings, you can definitely, and you can see I triggered my Zen pulse here. Uh, but with ancient teachings, you can definitely do things that are going to be a little bit different. I have Discord closed. Whatever. Um, so in the Mythic Plus build, there's some differences that you want to do because in Mythic Plus, you have the ability to be a little bit more aggressive with how you decide you want to play. Because in raid situations, you know, your main focus is going to be healing. You doing as much damage as possible is not going to make or break a boss fight. Let's just be real. There aren't that many, like, tight damage checks left in WoW anymore. I mean, reality is that the last one was kind of mythic sludge fist from nathria there hasn't been really a really tight dps check ever since wow has unfortunately in my opinion gone away from the determining thing that's going to figure out whether or not you kill a boss is your damage to the thing that's going to determine whether or not you kill a boss is how long can you survive the mechanics and that's kind of become true in mythic plus it's less about can you kill the thing in a certain window and more about can you survive what it does back to you it is what it is but because of that you get that chance to be more aggressive and jade fire stomp is really the the pathway through that so jade fire stomp you're not going to spam it a ton like you use it as you can see goes on a cooldown i'm getting the ancient concordance buff and the awakened jade fire buff because it allows for uh things like blackout kick and your ancient teachings kick healing to become more aggressive so in mythic plus scenarios your priority still spread your renewing mist keep that going enveloping mist doesn't see as much use in mythic plus situations outside of maybe throwing one occasionally on your tank but what you're going to want to do and let's kind of run down here this so what you're going to want to do is obviously you want to spread your renewing miss chaos and then immediately almost rising sunk kick so you get the hot extension but you can do things like as you can see i'm getting very quickly stacked to four stacks now the other thing is that jade fire stomp costs significant mana it's about three percent of mana for every one that you do so you don't necessarily want to use it on cooldown, but you can see how often it resets. But you can see also how long the buff is there. So while as, as long as Jade Fire Stomp is up, you can see it's sitting out here for a while. You can just sit on this and then just refresh. Now, uh, in this case, it's going to be a situation where like those mobs obviously are standing still. They're not moving. So I'm going to get a lot of resets. There are going to be times where Jade Fire Stomp does not reset because you move to a different pack or you move over to a uh or the mob has to the tank has to pull them out for whatever reason you know, largely in the past that was like sanguine um in the future we'll see there's going to be things that happen that require mobs to be pulled out of your jade fire stomp so you kind of have to manage it a little bit but I'll go from there now real quick i mentioned this earlier 1.2 second cast on Sheelan's gift in my raid build, uh, mythic plus build so but the other thing that you didn't really see in that little example of jade fire stomp is that every time you rising sun kick every time you tiger palm uh every time you blackout kick and then every time you spin spinning crane kick you're also doing a little bit of trick of healing now ancient teachings in mythic plus is not your primary 
form of like for heavy damage events. It's really good for low and medium damage events. It's going to do a lot of healing there, which means you can be more aggressive with how you deal damage. But in cases where heavy damage is going out, you're going to need to abandon the all damage output so that you actually can cast your healing spells. So be mindful of that. Don't get into this mindset of I have to do all I like I have to use these abilities all the time. Keep an eye on the health bars. If there's a heavy damage scenario that comes out, I think of, for example, the sub 50% uh, marks of the dragons and ruby life pools. And so uh, in cases like that, you know, where there's a lot of group damage going out, your ancient teachings is not always going to be able to heal through all of that. And that is okay. The thing that makes fist weaving really fun and makes it a powerful healer is that it's flexible. If you need to go into like heavy healing because of a damage event or something like that, you have the ability to do that and you can do that on a group method, whether in the Mythic Plus build it's through Shilin's Gift or using your Celestials or using Revival uh, or really strong Renewing Mist Spread with Rising Sun Kick uh, Vivify Spam. Uh, there are different ways that you can make that work. Um, and then in raid builds, if you're in heavy damage period, you're not using as, your damage as much anyways. You're really just rising sun kicking on cooldown with the occasional like, hey, there's not a lot of damage going on. I can tiger palm and blackout kick and stuff like that. Uh, so you just kind of want to be very mindful of not getting too honed in. People get this idea that like, Mistriever does damage to heal. And while it does have periods that it does, it does not mean that that's the only way you heal. You do have periods where you just have to straight up cast your healing spells. And that's great, to my in my opinion. It makes it's what part of makes the healer fun. So let's talk about celestials because they are interesting. Now I'm going to be the first one to admit I'm not the strongest knowledge base on Celestials. I generally know how they work. I generally know what's going to be a good, valuable lesson for them. Uh, but this is one that is part of the reason I had to do a little bit of research on it. So when it comes to Yulon, which you're generally only using in raid situations, so think of it from that perspective. Um, when you use Yulon, now there are little things that you can do to min-max it, but again, from a beginner's perspective, I want to focus on what are the things that you can do to uh, give yourself a steady foundation? But when it comes to Yulon, the big thing to remember is that when you use it, just envelop your mist, depending on your haste, anywhere between three and five targets. All right. And then you just vivify spam. Now, in the past, with like soothing mist builds, you would channel into a soothing mist target and do that and really heal them, like pick a tank and then just heal them excessively. But you don't really have to do that particularly because there are a lot of builds that don't take Soothing Mist. But yeah, Vivify anywhere between three to five targets, depending on your haste, and then just Vivify spam. And you're gonna do get what's called the ramp window. And basically what that does in the ramp window is that you're allowed to basically pile up these heals and then go from there. Now the other thing to remember is that even while in your Yulon ramp window, you still want a Rising Sun Kick because it activates things like Crane Style, it activates Rising Mist, you know, it can, uh, you know, it still engages a lot. It reduces the cooldown of revival if you've used it. Uh, things of that nature. So you don't just straight up spam healing. You're still going to want to make sure you're in range of a mob so that you can rising sun kick them when it's off cooldown so that you can maximize the effectiveness that you're getting out of this. Now, Soothing Breath is, is also a hot that, as you can see, Soothing Breath healing the target and up to two allies for, uh, for me, it's about 30,000 damage over roughly four seconds. That can be extended through Rising Mist and through your Rising Sun Kick cost, which is why it's important to make sure that you're still using that Rising Sun Kick on cooldown. All right. Uh, Chi Chi-G is a little bit different because generally speaking, you're going to use Chi-G in most Mythic Plus scenarios, and there's some very specific raid encounters if the fight design favors it, where it can be valuable. So in chi what you want to generally do is when you pop GG, you're going into full damage mode. So before you pop GG, you want to make sure that you Jade Fire Stomp so that you can get the Ancient Teachings buff while you're in Jade Fire Stomp. And then pop your GG. And then what you want to do is when you Blackout Kick something, you're going to get a stacking buff. And you'll see it on your GG bar uh, or GG icon if you run like a, a Weak Core package or whatever. 
where it makes your next enveloping mist free and cast cost a lot less mana. Uh, and so what you want to do is you want to weave in getting these three stacks of GG in between casting enveloping mist on a target because then you're going to spread that soothing breath. You're going to spread your enveloping mist casts and you're going to maximize the effectiveness that you're getting out of the buff. All the while, you're still doing damage the entire time. So you're contributing very powerfully in two different ways. So again, these are very, TG is a lot more complicated in terms of what it can do in terms of maximizing it. But again, I'm looking at you as someone that is learning how to play the spec. So the basics are that you want to Jade Fire Stomp and then pop your TG and then do is do your damage, but monitor your buffs. So uh, remember ancient teachings are uh, your passive ancient teachings see right here teachings of the monastery makes it so that when you tiger palm you stack blackout kick and then through the talent uh i guess it's not in here anymore but uh through ancient concordance blackout kick strikes three targets so in reality when you're in your jade fire stomp all you got to do is blackout kick once in an aoe pack and you're going to max stack the chi buff and so what you do is you with jade fire stomp Pop GG, Rising Sun Kick if you have it, and then immediately Blackout Kick. Because every time it strikes, it has a chance to reset Rising Sun Kick, but you're also going to stack your buff. Enveloping Mist to Target. Generally speaking, you want to pick a target a group that's clumped up. So if you're triple ranged, have your range clump up. If their range are close together, clump them up, hit it on a ranged person, so you get that Soothing Breath onto three targets. If you're in a melee heavy comp, Soothing Mist the tank or Soothing Mist yourself, so that you can spread that so that soothing breath out into multiple targets or the gust of mists cast all right so there's that gameplay loop to it um, i'll probably either do a video or i'll link to megaset's video that she did for dragonflight which is still mostly correct i'm sure it's going to be updated for uh, the war within that she's going to do because she explains it really well in terms of how you go about through your ramp, ramp windows, but I would get comfortable using those Celestials before you go diving into that. So, uh, like I said, I know that's a lot that I kind of threw at you with that, but be mindful with GG. It's it's complicated, but very rewarding when you can play it well. All right, let's talk about Revival. What do you do with Revival? Now in raid situations, it's generally going to be planned out by your healing lead or your healing officer or your raid lead because all the damage events in raids are pretty scripted and so there's going to be a time where your revival is just going to do really really good stuff so in raid you don't have to think about revival a lot unless you're the healing officer and you're trying to figure out where you put it in which case you're probably not needing this video uh, so let your healing lead kind of figure out hey this is where we're going to use tank cooldowns so that or raid cooldowns so that we maximize our ability to survive the blast. All right. So raid, you don't have to think about it. In Mythic Plus, there's a lot more varied use. If you have a, a group wide debuff, that's magic, poison, or disease, you can use revival to clear that off immediately, especially if it's kind of potent. You can use revival as, hey, there's a bunch of damage going out. I don't have Sheelan's gift stacked high enough. I need another one. You can pop this as a big three minute cooldown. So there are definitely things that you can do with revival, um, but really revival is just like when your group is taking a bunch of damage and you need to get everyone healed up quickly, you can revival. Like I said, in raid situations, it's going to be planned out, but in Mythic Plus situations, just pop it when your group is taking a bunch of damage. That's really the benefit of it. All right. So I know we kind of combined a lot of tips and tricks plus healing priority because, like, again, healing is very, very different in that uh, there are things that you can do that are going to best set you up for success, but a lot of it is reacting in real time to what's happening on the fly. Uh, healer is definitely the most, like, in-the-moment type second-to-second -second gameplay because DPS, you have, like, a pretty set rotation. You just want to try to do that rotation as cleanly as possible. For tanks, you're also a little bit what in the moment because you're also trying to make sure that you're alive, but you get to a point where you kind of just know your damage buttons and you just press them in their rotation and you get that muscle memory. Healing is not really a true muscle memory that you can develop other than practicing your core tenets. 
spread renewing mist, vivify cleave, and then practice your, uh, you know, your uh, respective uh, serpent or uh, celestial rotation. Life cocoon. Life cocoon is interesting. Uh, life cocoon is your external. Uh, it used to be like amazingly and gloriously useful for everybody. Now you just kind of pop it on your tank when you don't really and you don't really think about it. It took a nerf. It's unfortunately unfortunate that it took the nerf that it did. But here's where we are, where we are with it. So life cocoon, you want to definitely use it on your tank as a way to save and protect your tank. They lack defensives and they're about to take a big hit. Life cocoon them. If they're a, a blood DK and they're running in on pull and they don't have bone shield up, life cocoon them. If your tank's like, oh crap, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble, life cocoon them. You know, if your tank is perfectly fine, they're chilling, they're singing payphone, and your DPS is like, oh god, I'm gonna die from this, life cocoon them. Life cocoon is really like a almost like a get out of jail free button because it just opens up all sorts of options to allow you to save a teammate. So all right, enough of that. Let's generally talk about stats. So Mystery River Monk is a spec that, uh, generally speaking, you value a lot of haste. Now I'm a little bit geared more towards Brewmaster, which doesn't value haste all that much, but, so I've got some pieces that are like no haste at all. Uh, Windwalker now values haste, spoiler alert. But Mistreaver has always really valued haste because it infects, uh, it affects rather, uh, hot tick rates. It affects uh, things like your rising sun kick cooldown because it's hasted. It affects the renewing, you know, your renewing mist has a nine second charge. How much it ticks? It affects how much you're enveloping mist ticks. It affects the cast speed of your vivify. It affects the cast speed of your shieldlands gift. So it has a lot of impacts. There's just a lot of good scaling that comes with it. Now, generally speaking, for a long time, in Mythic Plus, you valued versatility because it actually impacted your damage, which meant bigger Ancient Teachings healing. That has become a little less so with things like Crane Style really starting to come into play. So for both Mythic Plus and Raid scenarios, you generally want to prioritize pieces that have either Crit or Mastery on them. Mastery has become a little bit more valuable because of the changes that they've made to it. So now where Rising Sun Kick, Expel Harm, Sheelan's Gift, and Vivify along with your normal, or excuse me, your they added Rising Sun Kick, Expel Harm, and Sheelan's Gift to the Mastery, which made it infinitely more valuable. And so there is a ton of value now. I won't say a ton, but there's quite a bit of value in your Mastery now because your most important spells that you use, Renewing Mist and Rising Sun Kick, now play off of your Mastery. And so Mastery now has a little bit more value. So generally speaking, and this could always change, and it's going to change based on the character and your own personal stat distributions and stuff like that. But generally speaking, you want haste and then crit and mastery and then verse. Now, the good thing is, is that generally speaking, Mistreaver likes all four stats now. That said, haste still has a big priority. So if you're choosing between like a haste verse piece and a crit mastery piece, you're still probably better off taking the haste verse piece unless your haste is just an insane value number. Mine's only 3,700. The breakpoint in Dragonflight is around 5,500. So for me, getting a, a haste verse piece is going to be infinitely more valuable than getting a crit mastery piece where I have a ton of crit already and also you have a ton of verse already. So it just really all depends on your own personal stat distributions and how you're going about doing that. All right. Generally, healing tips and tricks, and then we'll talk about some mystery specific ones. Um, get very good at knowing your unit frames. Whether you use an add-on for that or whether you use the default frames, you want to make sure that they're positioned in a way that is going to be easily accessible for you. So, for example, I use an, an add-on called Cell. All right. And let me show you my party setup so party setup as you can see here it sits right here next to my unit frame not far from mine and in theory I could even move this over right over here so that my weak ores and my ability to see the health on my unit frames are very much like the same that said I put some other information right in here that is 
always useful to me, so I put the party frames over here. But as you can see, I don't have to look way off into the distance. I can look straight at my character and out of the corner of my eye, kind of get a sense for what people's bars are at. I don't have to move my eyes like this, where I'm going from like here all the way to over here so that I can see my, my frames and stuff. So positioning your party frames or your raid frames in a way that is going to be somewhat centrally located or is in a place where you can very easily track the information without having to like break your neck looking all the way across your screen to figure out what's going on. I have legitimately seen healers that have all of their frames sitting over in this corner and I just don't understand. It's not as efficient because now you're looking over here and you're going to miss swirlies under your feet. You're going to miss that you're targeted by abilities. You're going to not really be paying attention to your mana all that well if you're like me and you have your unit frames more centralized. Now, I also have a raid healing setup that I use specifically for raid. And as you can see here, again, central bottom. This is a very common place for, for frame, raid frames to be hanging out. I've even seen some people do party frames right down here in the middle. That's why there's this big gap in my UI between my action bars and my, my frames is because this is where my raid healing goes. So tips and tricks is really just use a, whatever you use for your frames. I'm not here to tell you what's best or not. I use cell. I really enjoy it. There are people that use grid. There are people that use voodoo. There are people that use LDUI. There are people that use default frames. Just whatever frames you use, make sure they're in a place where your eyes can see them quickly without you having to waste too much time trying to screen real estate your way through everything. Okay. Healing trick two, track your renewing mists. Now, I have something through cell. You can't really see it all that well here. Actually, I don't know if it's going to be where I have indicators or excuse me yeah let's go down to healers where i have them as you can see here let me move this where they are gonna stack left to right right here with the hots that i have so if i have renewing mist on a target it's gonna show if i have enveloping mist also on a target it's gonna show both so tracking your renewing mist is going to be really important be through your frames because it's going to let you know how much vivify cleave or zen pulse cleave or rising sun kick time uh rising mist you know hot duration extension that you have and because it empowers so much of your other kit you want to make sure that you're not wasting them by casting them on someone that's already got it and because it jumps it's smart jumps from a target that's full health to a target that's injured you want to be able to know when that happens it's not you know if you accidentally like hey this person's got no renewing mist on them and they're injured i'm going to cast it on them oh right as i hit the button to cast renewing mist another one jumped to that character i just wasted that that's going to happen no player is perfectly able to predict and track that stuff it just is what it is but it's still good to know like who you have renewing mist on because it enables so much of your kit and again i don't care how you track it whether it's through an add-on through a weak aura through the default frames make renewing mist a big part of what you're looking at when you look at your frames for party and raid okay uh what are some other ones like i said manatee is a big one i think we kind of talked a little bit about manatee but i can't emphasize this enough use manatee liberally whether you full chug or you only do partial chugs use it liberally use it as a way to reduce mana cost on your big cooldown abilities use it as a way to fully re restore your mana so you can be prepared for the next fight use it as a way to just keep yourself as sufficient and efficient as possible because you've all been in those groups where your tank just goes and they don't stop they don't stop to check for the healer mana i've been in those groups i've been the healer in that group with guildies that i'm in voice with where I'll be like, mana, 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 and then they're just like, nope, we're pulling. And aw, there, look, there's a boss that's pulled, so I have no choice but to chug a manatee. So be very, very mindful and very liberal with your manatee consumption until you start to figure out like these really nice pinpoint spots where they're gonna be valuable. All right. Uh, expel harm. Expel harm is interesting because it can act as a good self-heal, but I wouldn't wholly rely on it. It's an ability that I would say, uh, you can use on yourself as a way to like heal yourself without having to 
waste too much mana because it's very efficient at only 3500 mana whereas vivify is 7500 and even renewing mist is 4500 so it's super efficient self heal so you can use it as a way to heal yourself up quite a bit i admit i'm not the greatest at remembering to expel harm myself just because i still getting better uh, but we go from there be liberal about your defensive cooldown usage you in most standard builds you have fortifying brew and you take diffuse magic in like raid builds and stuff or in mythic plus builds for example be liberal with their usage yes they have long cooldowns minute and a half for diffuse but like you know fort brew is about a minute and a half uh baseline as well use them liberally the less that you have to spend mana on healing yourself the more mana you have to heal your party members and so if you're using your defensives in an aggressive, well, I don't say aggressive, but in a way that like anytime you're targeted by something, you if you have a defensive, you're using it, it's just going to help make your life easier because the less that you have to focus on you, the more you can focus on the rest of your team. Um, those are really like the biggest tips and tricks that I have really uh, for Mistweaver Monk. So congratulations class, you have passed your Mistweaver class exam. Next, we're going to be moving on to Windwalker, and that'll be coming out on Patreon first uh, over the course of this upcoming weekend as I record this, and we'll hit YouTube probably Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. So until the next video, I hope you all stay safe, you enjoy yourself, you're having fun, you keep on gaming, and I will see you all in the next video.